basically like with the blue futon and I'm going to Sundance. Okay, well not really because it's not in person, but I do have tickets and I'm seeing at least 10 to 12 movies that are showing at Sundance throughout the 25th to like the 24th. And I decided I'm going to give you the list of what I'm seeing and what reviews you're expecting from me actually going to Sundance. Got the tickets. They're like $20 a movie. But you know what? I was like, you know what? I want to figure this out. Do it by myself. Let's do it. These are what I'm seeing at the Sundance Film Festival. Alright, on the first day, on the 20th of January, I'm seeing Fire of Love. So this is about scientists and lovers died in a volcanic explosion doing the very thing that brought them together, unraveling the mysteries of the volcanoes by capturing the most explosive imagery ever recorded. This is like one of my only documentaries I'm watching, but I read that synopsis and I'm like, oh my god. Like this visual, this is going to be a visual feat and just a sad movie about these two lovers that love volcanoes and they die doing what they love. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to put that on the list to watch. And that is my first movie premiere I'm watching. So the next one I'm actually seeing, a lot of people have already seen it, but this is a Sundance premiere as well on the 20th, The Worst Person in the World. This is the chronicles of four years of the life of Julie, a young woman who navigates the troubled waters of her love life and struggles to find her career path, leading her to take a realistic look at who she really is. So like I said, this has been at other film festivals before. You can see a lot of other YouTube critics and audience scores or ever have already reviewed this movie, saying they loved it, saying the acting's great, the writing's great, the directing's great. But like I said, premiere, Sunday is the 20th, I'm there. All right, so the next one I got tickets for, because a lot of these are actually selling out pretty quick, is the 21st. Premiere, After Yang. This has Colin Farrell in it. And this is in the near future, a robot reckons with questions of love connection and loss after their AI helper unexpectedly breaks down. So this already has a 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb, so I'm curious. It's PG, hour and 21 minutes. Like I said, this is another movie that already went to multiple festivals in 2021, but Sundance premiere 2022, I have tickets ready to go on the 21st. So the same day is a movie called Watcher, and I think this movie came out, in, or it is a foreign movie that is based in Romania. A young woman moves to a new apartment with her fiance only to be tormented by the feeling that she is being stalked by an unseen watcher in an adjacent movie. I found that in, uh, pretty fascinating with the premise of this movie. It's like, you know what? Let me see where it's at. And the time zone or time slot was perfect. The watcher is only an hour and a half movie, so I'm ready. Premiere, ready. Put that on the calendars, yo. All right, the next one that day or that night, because it's really confusing, like this is a premiere, but it's at 12.55 a.m., either the 21st or the 22nd, so I got to reel on that, but it's called Fresh. Sebastian Stan is in this one. The horrors of modern dating seen through one young woman's defiant battle to survive her new boyfriend's unusual appetites. So this has an R rating already with strong and disturbing violent content, bloody images, language throughout, some sexual content and brief graphic nudity. I don't know what to expect. This has a release date of March 4th, but like I said, I got tickets for the premiere of Fresh. Let's, I'm curious on that one, guys. Like That one could be really good or really fucked up like Raw, and I did not like Raw at all. So here is the next one. This is another midnight premiere at 12.55, and I don't know if this is the 22nd or 23rd, but this is called See No Evil. This is a Danish movie. A Danish family visits a Dutch family when they meet on holiday. What is supposed to be an acrylic weekend slowly starts to unravel as the Danes try to stay polite in the face of unpleasantness. Don't know what it was about. Saw the trailer and I'm like, okay, this is an interesting premise. I got time. That whole weekend is going to be a sun dance film festival weekend. So I'm like, wait, let's put it on the list. There's nothing wrong with that. Next one on the 22nd. Premiere. Duel. Aaron Paul, uh, who else is in it? Gillian. I forgot her first name. Ah, Karen Gillian. Idiot of me. So this synopsis. This is this guy who directed The Art of Self-Defense. That is why I, I saw the director. That's why I got this one. But this is about a woman's optic ops 
for a cloning procedure after she receives a terminal diagnosis, but once she recovers, her attempts to have her clone decommissioned fails, leading to a court-mandated duel to the death. If you watch The Art of Self-Defense and that ending, I'm fascinated. Like I said, I saw the director and I said, buy the ticket, let's do it. So this is actually another premiere on the 22nd, first showing. This is the first ticket I bought because of the synopsis and everything like that. It has uh, Naomi replacing it as well. She was in Lamb. She's in a lot of stuff. In an isolated mountain village in 19th century Macedonia, a young girl is kidnapped and transformed into a witch by an ancient spirit. I was like, okay, I'm down. Rated R already for violence and gore, sexual content, graphic nudity, and sexual assault. So it sounds like maybe a rape or something like that in between, but I think that's going to be a bonkers. I think it's a 24 movie, so I said, you know what, I got to do it. All right, so these next ones, these are second screenings. And what that means, guys, is if you get the premiere, you have a very, very short window to actually watch the movie, maybe like a three-hour window for when it starts with the online, at least. Like it says, you have, if it is showing at like 7 o'clock, the window closes at 10 o'clock, so you have a very short window. But if it's a second showing, you have a whole 24 hours to buy the ticket because a lot of these movies happen throughout the day and you don't have time to see the premiere showing. You got to choose what you what you want to do in the premiere. But these four, yes, these five, sorry, these five, I have tickets for and I'm watching within that 24 hour window and they are hatching. So this is a Swedish movie, if I'm not mistaken, a young gymnast who tries desperately to please her demanding mother discovers a strange egg. She hides and keeps it warm, but when it hatches, what emergent shocks them all. I saw the trailer. It looks very low budget, but it looks gory and is absolutely bonkers. And I was like, you know what? I got to do it for that reason. The next one, it was actually called Emergency. And I, I read the synopsis. Here it is. Ready for a night of partying, a group of Latino college students, which that is very wrong. Two of the students are black. One is Latino. So that synopsis is already wrong. Much weigh the pros and cons of calling the police when faced with an emergency. And the emergency is seeing a white girl in their apartment or a house or something like that. So I saw this and I was like, ah, is this going to be a race baiting movie? But then I watched the director who said this is about his brother too. He said his brother and him, political, social commentary, or blood and water. Like they're completely opposite political spectrum, completely opposite, you know, social spectrum. But he says they're actually willing to talk each out like each other's differences. And I said, okay, I'm willing to give this movie a try. Because honestly, if you read a lot of the synopsis for the movies during Sundance, a lot of it feels like they're race baity and they're just basically copy of like what Jordan Peele did and stuff like that with Get Out. And you're just like, do we really understand what America is? Like, are these filmmakers like in that bubble where you're like, that's not what the real world is like? So, you know, come out. But like I said, Emergency, it was what the director, I his vision and what he actually said. I said, okay, it seems like he's open-minded. So let me give this movie, let me be open-minded. I can't judge a book by its cover. Next one is 892. So this is Mr. Michael Kenneth Williams' last movie. This is about a Marine War veteran who faces mental and emotional challenges when he tries to regenerate or reintegrate, sorry, back into civilian life. Actually, if you read another synopsis, it is about him going to a bank with a bomb and trying to rob it. So you're like, wait a minute, what is this movie actually about? And this is one where I was like, oh, this is a very interesting premise. Let me give it a try. 892. So the last two guys is Resurrection. This has Rebecca Hall on it. Margaret's life is in order. She's capable, disciplined, and successful. Everything is under control. That is until David Return carries with him the horrors of Margaret's past. No idea what it's about. I, I gotta get this one to try. The weirdest one is either gonna be Piggy. I haven't bought those tickets yet, but one I did buy, and oof, let's see what it's about. We Met in Virtual Reality. Filmed entirely in the world of VR, this documentary captures the excitement and surprising intimacy of cultural movement demonstrating the power of online connection in an isolated world. I read, I watched the trailer and I was a little iffy about it. I was like, you know what? 
think outside the box. Let me see what this movie is about. But yes, all those movies I have tickets for, except for Piggy. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that one yet. But if I do it, you'll see a review of it. But yeah, that is right. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 movies I'm watching in that 4-day span. It is going to be bonkers. I'm going to try to get you first reactions and reviews very quickly. But that, this is going to be my first Sundance. Not a real Sundance, but, you know, 2022 in my home. I'm excited because this is kind of my first time seeing movies before their actual release are like in theater. So I'm kind of stoked. But anyway, chase back with the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this blue futon utopia. You blue futonians, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Are you interested in any of these movies? Have you seen any of these movies? Are any of them? Which one? Add those synopsis where you're like, that sounds good. Or other ones where you're like, nah, fam, I'm not about that life. But anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. I, I'm just going to repeat myself one more time. Thank you for watching. Thank you.